Hey everyone, this is Gregory Hart. This is the Heart to Heart podcast. This is episode number 10. Today I have the honor of speaking with this amazing, hilarious couple that not only juggles having a successful podcast, but running successful social media pages while having two small children. I can't wait to jump in the deep end with these guys and hear about how they do it all and how they found the success with raising two small children. Please help me introduce the laughing couple, Brittany and Ryan Ostafi. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Super stoked to have you on. Uh, how's your day going so far? Our absolute pleasure. Things yeah, are good. Awesome. We had a pretty good day. It's like gorgeous out. Today's so a good like day. We're, uh, we're always happier when the sun's it's shining. It's a good day. This is a singing yeah. montage for you. <laughs> so yeah, to jump good. right into things, how did you guys start off by doing podcasts? Did you guys just sit there one day? You're like, we are we're funny as hell like people want to listen to us talk obviously so is that how this happened or you guys had a, like a plan set to do this i wish we had that kind of confidence uh <laughs> i don't find Brittany funny at all yeah, actually like, i so. actually don't even like ryan uh, so uh, it's awkward <laughs> no the the short story long is um uh, britney britney in 2019 started pushing her boss to fee account on instagram um and it really took off uh, in 2019. She had a, a pretty funny skit, which was she was making fun of the people who made fun of her. She called it Trolling Tuesdays. Love it. Uh, and, that really, and that really took off. And um, simultaneously, uh, around that same time, I was starting a new business as well. And so what was happening, she, Brittany was in a really creative space and I was in a really creative space, but neither of those spaces were the same space. Yep. Um, so although we were all, we were both up to exciting things for our family, we were not really up to exciting things for our relationship. And, uh, towards the tail end of 2019, we, we started to sit down and realize, you know, not that we were losing each other, but we were missing that, that connection. And so we were growing, we just like, weren't growing something together. Yeah. But it's not like we were growing apart. No. We just yep. were growing in parallel directions, mm -hmm. just not it's not, not looking at each other kind of thing. And so uh, tail end of 2019, we said, listen, we got to do something together. Like you're in a creative space. You're in a really cool spot with this uh, Instagram stuff. Like let's do something together. And so we toyed around with the idea of the podcast and then, you know, COVID hit in March of 2020 and we had no more excuses. We had like, no, no reason not to, to do. do it. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was about day five of COVID and um, all we were talking about was COVID, 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 COVID. And I said, yeah. you know, we're a pretty half, like glass half full family. I would even say more, not even glass half full or half empty. There's just water in the glass and drink it. That's kind of how we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's an analogy. <laughs> no, it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. It's an analogy. <laughs> it is now. It is now. It makes sense. Oh, there's water in that glass. Let's yeah. drink it. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. I feel like uh, you're trying to be so deep. No, I wasn't trying to be deep at all. <laughs> I didn't even use my deep voice. Okay. okay. Anyways, uh, again, uh, short story long. Um, by day five, I said to her, you know, there are people in here who don't live the lives that we live. And if we're talking doom and gloom, what is everyone else talking about? Yeah. I said, you know, what we need to do is stop talking about what we're talking about. We need to start doing something that's fun, that's creative, because that's we can't great. we can't change what's going on outside. This, this COVID thing is this COVID thing. We didn't really know what it was at the time. And I said, and, I, and I'm going to bet that there are people who are willing to listen to people not talk about COVID. And literally within a right. month, we bought our equipment. Uh, we went on to YouTube. We learned how to podcast. Yeah. Uh, we launched I'm a podcast. You. And um, like to our surprise, it took off. Yeah. It's very surprising to hear that you guys started at the beginning of COVID because when COVID first hit, it was a thing in the back of my mind. Like I had always listened to Rogan. I had always listened to all these different comedic podcasts because I really enjoy the comedy scene and I've always wanted to get into doing stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. And I always use that as a way to just, I drive a lot and it, it, it got rid of my time. Like it just made my time go a lot faster. Um, and I always had the same excuse. Like, I don't want to spend the money on this gear, how much time goes into it. And I don't even have kids. So like, that's not even the beginning of when I got, I got to ask you guys how you guys juggle all this mm. stuff. But when January of this year hit, I, I said to myself, I said, you know what, I'm going to spend some money. I'm going to do this regardless if it takes off. And every time someone asks me, what do you want out of this? It honestly is a hobby for me. I love talking mm -hmm. to new people. I love hearing their story. I like learning new things. 
And this gives me a way to do that without just message you being like, Hey, can we talk on the phone for 45 mm-hmm. minutes? Cause I really want to hear about your day to some yeah. random person that has something to talk about. So <laughs> I definitely did jump into it the same kind of, uh, kind of way you guys did is just kind of bought the gear and rolled into it. And I did the exact same thing. I, I went on YouTube. What do I got to do? What the hell is an RSS feed? How the heck do I make one of those? I'm like messaging IT support of people that like work for like IT of schools. Like what's yeah. an RSS feed? How do I make one of these? Um, it's yeah, a lot of information. It was, a, it was a cluster at first, but now that you have like the, the platforms and the websites to post them to, and you kind of get into the rhythm, you kind of know what you're getting into. And the fact that you guys juggle making your own podcasts, Brittany, I've definitely seen your social media it's i got a lot of talk i got a lot of questions about that too because it's so funny but thank you to juggle that good thing one person finds it funny (laughs) oh good one (laughs) yeah yeah, you gotta be hard on her and like like what you said like making the time to have that connection together and that time to talk to one another i don't know how many times me and my fiance are sitting on the couch and like we go upstairs to bed and we turn on the lights and we're like did we say one word to each other since we've been Like, I know just, we don't even like, and like to just to, to say it again, like we don't have kids, like we get home and we, we make dinner and we try and clean up and we try and de-stress from the day. And then we hop on our phone and I'm stuck on marketplace looking for stuff I shouldn't buy. And exactly. she's on uh TikTok and stuff. So I, I do respect the, the making time for yourself and being able to express out people. That's awesome. Um, but my it. biggest question was like, how do you guys juggle all of this stuff at once? We, uh, we call, well, when we do our podcast stuff, or if we ever do any like skits or anything like that, we, we call it our, our dark hustle. And that it means that we do all of that at nighttime because we don't have, or like at the wee hours of the morning, Ryan's editing in the morning, I'm editing at night or we're filming at night. And we try to be pretty intentional with like, I, I usually like come to Ryan. I have like a thousand ideas. And he's like, yeah, okay, cool. Just like, tell me when to show up, what I'm saying. <laughs> and, and like, we have to, because otherwise like our time is so sh- like, we don't have a lot of it or, you know, right now we're our oldest daughter is doing online school. So she's also here and we're like trying to work and we're like, could you like, you're, could you go away? <laughs> you're really annoying right now, but we're also <laughs> trying, we're trying to help her with her school and work. So I just think it's about like intentionality when you have to have a schedule, you have to do things sometimes when you don't want to, like, I mean, you know, this running your own podcast, but it's a lot of work every week to show up and have conversations, not only like with each other, but with other people and like keep yep. that conversation yep. going and flowing and, and then to just keep at it. Cause there are definitely weeks where we're like, I am, I don't want to do this. Like, I'm so tired. I don't want to talk. I just want to like turn your brain off. But then after we find, after we podcast, we force ourselves. We always feel better. Well, I do. Yeah. We're, neither Brittany or I or our gym people. I think both of us have attended the gym a yeah. few times in our lives. You're it's, the same, it's the same. Yeah. It's the same concept. It's like, you know, you don't want to go to the gym, but when you, I don't know too many people who leave the gym saying, oh, I wish I didn't go yeah. to the gym. Um, for us, it's one of those things where it's just like, oh my God, what time's, what time's our podcast? What time are we interviewing? Oh man, do I have a, do I have like 15 minutes to take a nap? Mm-hmm. Like, and sometimes it takes something like the truth is, is we can tell you all the structures in the world. The reality of it is it's not easy. Even yeah. if the structures are there, it's more or less a commitment and having that intentionality sitting down and unfolding what the week looks like uh, and then putting a plan and hopefully our kids go to sleep during those times that they're supposed to. Uh, <laughs> and then we just lift the, and you know what, there are days, honestly, there's, there are days where we choose not to do what's on our schedule. Yeah. Like if we have to podcast, like if it's just him and I, and we're like, okay, we need to do this. Um, and we're in like a shitty mood or we just have had a day will one of us will usually call it we'll be like tod like this isn't happening tonight what is tod time of death oh yeah or todd <laughs> which i'm sure and i know that this happens between me and my fiance we'll both be thinking like we really don't want to do this and it takes yeah. one of us to finally get to that breaking point where we're like can we yes. not do this the other one's like oh my gosh thank god like i do thank not want to do this either yeah, but, for sure. Yeah, and you know, then other, I think also sometimes like 
there also is a scenario where it's like one of somebody's like, I really don't want to do this. And you need that other person to be like, shut up. We have to do this tonight. And then like, they have to kind of be the rock to pull you in. Um, and like, you have to switch that back and forth because it's hard. (laughs) Yeah. The, the, the truth is it, no matter what you're doing, it's always harder to do it the next day. Yeah. It's always harder to do something later. Um, It's, Especially I if the glass right. is full of water and you want to take a sip. It wasn't me being deep. <laughs> Why do you keep calling me out on being deep? I'm not being deep. Just was like, was, a, Why you call me out on being deep? Whatever. Oh you said I wasn't funny. So this no, but podcast see, is just about me ripping you apart now. All right. Fair. But no, it's uh, later is always harder. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think the big thing is, is you have to know yourself and you have to know your partner and you have to have some generosity, but you also, again, when there's that intentionality, you know, you look at it and say, okay, well, if you don't do it now, then we have to do it on Sunday. Do you really want to do this on Sunday? No, I don't want to do it on Sunday. Well then let's go. Uh, and and then sometimes it's like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it on Sunday. I've had that mentality sometimes too, where like every single one of my episodes is with a guest. I've thought about maybe trying to do some like one-on-ones where I just talk about like maybe some of the things I've had to deal with in my life, like different struggles and stuff I've went through to try and relate to some people. Um, but most of mine are with guests and I try and stay uh, like with a, with a reminder in my phone saying Wednesdays, reach out, find new guests to, for like a month away. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, this week, make sure that you plan a time with those people, make sure it works for their schedule. Then it's like, okay, yeah, I only have time Saturday from noon to one. And it's like, all right, middle of the day on Saturday, it's 28 degrees out, let's podcast. Yeah. And it's like, you know what, you, you signed up for this and, and you do everything you can. And like with you guys, at least given the back and forth of pushing each other to do it, or at least both being on the same page to be like, you know what, not yeah. today, I think is probably the healthiest way to do it. Um, oh, yeah. But did you guys start off by watching other people's podcasts or how did you even like, I know there is actually a lot of people out there that, that kind of know what podcasts are, but don't even really listen to them. Did you guys listen to some before you guys started to do it? True story. I I had never listened to a single podcast before we started podcasting. (laughs) I did. I love, I like true crime podcasts, which is like nothing to do with us. And it's a totally different vibe. I think the only like research we did was like, what our intro wanted to be like we didn't really know how an intro is and then we had a good friend of ours who has just like the sexiest voice we were like will you say some shit for us for our podcast <laughs> she was like okay and then we, yeah, and we did song. that the, we did that the week before yeah, launch we were like, like i hey, guess we should you, have an intro i'm like can you read this for me <laughs> um and please so and it's still our it's to this day it's our it is think, she did such a good did job it's catchy. Job. i don't think we're ever going to change it but yeah. also ryan is like so good at like editing he might like downplay it but he when he wants to learn something he will be like full creepy whiteboard criminal minds there's like string <laughs> everywhere and he'll figure his shit out until he is like the he will tell you a lecture on how to set up like he does all of the editing i just show up and talk so that's the first time you've ever admitted that yeah. oh but i gosh. do all the other stuff like i do all of yeah, the, the talents like, here the funny stuff yeah the talents, the talents here yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's jokes like uh, i honestly it was a very big um change for me i i i do know how to operate the computer and like my parents will always ask me to help them with stuff like i grew up on right. technology like we that's what we did we had phones in high school like um but going through the editing software like i just downloaded a free one called da vinci and i i edit all my videos and i always have a video do you guys have a video for every episode no we're just looking into doing that now it's just like another thing we have to kind of tackle yeah so we're at i think that we're you know we're fortunate we're blessed we're at a point now where we have a team that's starting to help us out Mm -hmm. so we've got a team that that coordinates our meetings our our meetings our interviews to and from like the ones that we're conducting the ones that we're on Uh, we've got a team that helps us with the marketing um so it's becoming you know now it's at a point where we're we're investing in -hmm. ourselves and we're, re- and I'd say we're investing in ourselves. Really, we're investing in our time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, okay, do we really want to be spending an extra 10 hours a week doing this? Or can we find someone who wants to do this for a living? Yeah. We're basically and, living in the Justin Timberlake movie time as currency. Yeah. 
essentially. Yeah, we're just <laughs> we're trading. We're now trading. Yeah, we're trading time so for money. so good. I don't care what anyone says. That was such really a cool un- that was an concept. underrated movie. So good. Justin I Timberlake. can clearly Thank see you. why you guys can sit there and chat for an hour or forty five <laughs> minutes. Go off. Your episodes there. <laughs> Little <laughs> tangent about Justin Timberlake. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, that will just go off. I know we digress a lot on that. <laughs> Whatever. But from the How beginning, you like, did married? you guys? Did you guys pay to promote your podcast or did you guys just, you bought the gear, you started podcasting, you got to a certain amount of episodes and then it was just kind of like, was there a turning point? Was there an episode that was like, oh shit, this is getting real. I think because, I think because we had the, like an existing platform with my Instagram and like an Mm. awesome community and a following, it was kind of like, we just, everyone from there has just like followed us over here yep. which is great um and then i think we just started talking and and we really try to be very transparent and relatable with how hard relationships can be sometimes because a lot of the times especially in social media everything isn't real right like you're just seeing a highlight reel essentially of Definitely. people's lives and it's it's really hard not to compare your life and oh my god these people look so happy but behind the scenes they're like bickering and arguing and it's not it's not real and so we were determined to kind of bring that real conversation to the community with parenting with relationships with money with sex all of that stuff so that people didn't feel so alone um and maybe misguided in their social media intake so yeah to answer the so i want to jump on that for a second but i want to make sure that i answer the question that you asked about financial side of it we didn't put a dime into this podcast uh up until over a year um we've done everything ourselves um not a cent was spent on this podcast marketing it managing it anything along those lines um because we didn't want to feel the pressure of the financial burden that comes with producing something along these lines it was a hobby we wanted to keep it as and it still is yeah but you think about like the, you know, you use the word, this is a hobby for you. Well, this is, this truly was at the core of the core of our, of our podcast was us getting together and sharing in conversation once a week when we started just to have a a carved out time for us to talk. Yeah. And that's what it was. And it, and it turned into something much greater than that, which is amazing. And we're, we're so blessed to have had that. Yep. But this was never to be, this was never designed to be our job. This was never designed to be something that generated cash for us. This was simply something for us to do together. So we didn't invest anything into it because there, the intention to grow, it wasn't the intention. The intention was to hang out with each other. And then we created this awesome. platform and then inside the platform, we created a community. And yep. now that we have this community, we feel a, a certain obligation to provide more for that. For sure. And that's that's the only reason why any monies are being spent at any point in time um, moving forward. Um, but to jump on, what, what what was it that you just said? I don't even know. You're just like, I'm going to take over this conversation because I want to, I don't know. I don't honestly, like, I don't know what you're trying to say. Oh, you, said, you brought up a good point. I, I did. Now it it's, it's absolutely just. You're so just like talking it. about it being a hobby and not putting money back into it. And now um, just being able to, yeah, just like you said, like being able to talk to each other like a couple. Mm-hmm. yeah it was about your instagram account but yeah loyal people that's all super loyal and then we had i think like our intention was to eventually get guests on but we were like i don't know who like is going to want to talk to us and then i think our fourth episode we had somebody reach out and the really awesome thing is um all of the guests that we've had on have like contacted our team us like we haven't we really haven't done much like, I don't even know what the word is, like searching for people to be on because we just hadn't been something that we've had the time to do to really vet people to come on. So we've been really, really grateful and very lucky that we've had people interested to want to talk to us because <laughs> we didn't, we didn't really do much in terms of getting people interested. Now, my biggest thing, Ish. and I'll touch on a couple of points made there. It's very exciting to hear, um, that you guys do still look at this as a hobby. You're not looking at it as like a, we have to get rich or you don't put all of this stress on yourself to make it something you, you already have your following on social media. Um, but it is exciting to hear that you guys do sit down and you follow the regiment and you guys do the things in order 
Um, I'm going on a tangent here. Like I did exactly what exactly what Ryan was doing there. I was trying to remember what the heck I was going to say. <laughs> no um, worries. Yeah. This is not oh, live. No, no, exactly the, what I was say. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just you guys do have the personality where people want to follow you for you. They don't want to follow you for your, your one-off conversation. The, I realize that the people that I follow that do podcasts, I like them regardless of what they say. I think they're funny. I think that the topics they touch on are, are relatable. I think that um, just the way that they rebuttal is funny. And the fact that they followed you on your social media first, Brittany, and then they realize with some sneak peeks of both of you guys in like the TikToks and the reels that you guys are just such a funny and relatable couple to be able to it, it does mean a lot when you can sit there and be like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Like that's so something that we would do. It, it just, it means a lot more. And I feel like that's why it's so much easier for people to follow you to another platform. I think that's the thing that people strive to do yeah. is to have an image that people want to follow regardless of what you're a part of. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's what I was going to say. So I'm glad you brought it back up. Cause that goes with what she was saying. Um, you know, when, when you do have a platform um, and you do have an image inside that platform, people make assumptions and assertions that you are X, Y, or Z. Um, and, you know, TikTok, or not TikTok, but Instagram, especially for Brittany, Instagram is one of those things where, you know, if you watch your stories, you might get two minutes of stories a day. Well, the day is a lot longer than two minutes. And there's a lot more that goes on in people's lives than what you see in their reels, what you see in their stories and what they choose to, to pick. Um, keep in mind that everything that you see on social media is a choice, mm -hmm. right? So people are literally choosing, this is what I want you to see about my life. And so, you know, one of the things that we heard on a regular basis before we launched the podcast is, oh, you and Ryan look so happy. You and Ryan always have it together. Like, must be nice, you know, marriage goals, all that fun stuff. And it's all flattering. It's all great. But the podcast for us is actually a way for us to expose that when we bring a guest on, we're getting coaching. Mm -hmm. Like we're in the thick of it. And if you listen to the podcast, you know that like we get in arguments on the podcast and we get in disagreements on the podcast and the people who are on there that are experts, we're, we brought them on to help us. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, and so, everybody else, and everybody else, but we're not, I think we're like, we're not afraid to be like, yo, this is what like Ryan. So he'll be like, hypothetically, and then he'll like fully talk about a situation like that just happened, but it's hypothetical <laughs> Asking for a friend, with, you like, know. with Brittany and Brian, like yeah. totally two random Brian. People. Yeah, Brian. exactly. Yeah, yeah, Brian. That's funny. That's no, so it's, it, you know, it, it's for us, I think, um, you know, because it is a, it, it is a hobby. We do love doing it. This is the most exciting thing we get to do all day. Like legit us hanging out together, creating together, laughing together. It's the thing that I look forward to more than anything else. It also gives us like, if, I mean, if you've listened to our podcast, we do a segment called I love you and you're annoying, yep. which is really like, I feel like probably the most like raw and real to kind of bring back what Ryan was saying, how Instagram and all of that stuff is very like, you're choosing what to show you and I think our podcast is like when we do I love you and you're annoying it lets us really be authentic to our relationship and we we do we get in like small discussions that are sometimes they can get a bit heated because it's we're like we're real people we've been yeah. married and been together for a while and we obviously like can bicker and fight about things but it's good to work out our problems and our conversations through the podcast sometimes because it allows us and it forces us to be like like confront those problems because sometimes like we'll just let it go and then they like snowball and compound and then a couple weeks and you're blowing up about something that happened three weeks ago so it helps us it really does right now you said you had a you said you had a fiance right and so we learned this while we were in that stage uh the when we were just moving in yeah when we moved we in together we hated each other oh um <laughs> because wow. we had to learn we had, to, and I say that lovingly, but it's true. We, we, we loved each other and did not like each other. Yeah. Uh, we had to learn how I to live that. together. We yeah. had to learn how to, um, you know, make things happen in a household together because neither her nor I ever had to do that with, a, with anyone but ourselves. And so the early stages of our relationship was a lot of work mm -hmm. and we, we still put in a lot of work into our relationship, but yeah, it's, 
I, I think ultimately at the end of the day, the willingness to, to, um, to be able to communicate. And this is what I was going to say with you and your spouse. We're on a podcast every single week. So at least once a week, we're talking about the things that are annoying us in the moment. If we didn't have that outlet, we would probably bury it. And then we bury the next one. And then we bury the next one. And then it's compounded, eventually. compounded, compounded. And then eventually you guys are going to get an argument about something and all of it's going to come up mm-hmm. where with us, with the podcast, because we're talking about it literally once, twice, sometimes three times a week, we really don't fight as nearly as often as we used to, because there's nothing really to fight about. Mm-hmm. And if we do fight about something, it's an acute situation and it ends because there's nothing else behind it. It's already over. Ryan is like stupidly annoying at apologizing because he's so good at apologizing and I am like not for it. That's true. I am very stubborn and like I'll accept his apology, which is like a beautiful TED talk, but I still want to be mad. Oh, like I'm, I'm not ready you. to be like, great. Like that's super great. I love your apology. Thank you. But also like go away. So see, that's where like <laughs> like just to go right from the beginning, like the reason why. I wanted to have you guys on. I did happen to go by one year, one of your reels when I was sitting there blindly looking at a thousand reels in a row. I happened <laughs> to pass one and I was like, Oh my gosh, these guys are funny. And then I like go to your profile and I see all your little things. And I realize you guys have a uh, podcast too. And then I started listening to your podcast and I did see the awful or the, the, the segments that you guys do where you guys um, talk about something that annoys you and something that you really like love about one another. Um, and then I listened to the Stephen Lee Olson one. Um, and I realized that a lot of your stuff is relatable. And, and the, the people that I bring on to this podcast, I don't care if they share it to their social media. Like I've had people that have, that are big on YouTube on, and I don't, my biggest thing is to hear why they're there, how they mm-hmm. got there, what drives them to continue to do more. So like hearing you guys just talk about how it means so much to you to be able to sit down and talk to each other once a week and have that genuine conversation, because trust me, I have definitely had my moments with my fiance. Like we were supposed to be married last year and this year, and now we're going to go till next year. But we've had those moments where it's like, Hey, uh, do you mind making sure that your plate is rinsed? And then it's like, you left your shoes at the door three days in a row. And it's like, whoa wait a minute what just happened like yeah and it is those like they do compound on one another and it does all come out at once that's really that's that's cool to hear that that's your way to vent to one another and it does make for a very um entertaining podcast because it is genuine it (laughs) is your relationship well the key is the word and right yes it's not (laughs) i love you but you're annoying it's i love you and you're annoying Yeah, because the word but diminishes the i love you so Good call. You put you, you you remove the butt, you add the and. It's like I love you, and you annoy the shit out of me today. Yes, usually um, like that. I don't want to we... diminish the I love you because that's the the root of all of it. That's how that's we a start good opportunity our, for merch. our real life conversations too. Like when Ryan doesn't do any, and when Ryan's or, or me, but mostly Ryan hasn't done something that I asked, I'll be like, I love you. So aggressive. <laughs> Listen, I love you, <laughs> but this is so effing annoying, and he's just like you are so right. I can understand how frustrating that would be. I'm like, Oh my God. Just you know, do it's it. a problem when she's like, I love you. I know. But, like, it's like a question <laughs> now. It's not really a statement. <laughs> yelling at it. See, the whole thing about it is she gets angry because I have empathy. Yeah. She, she gets angry because I have empathy. I don't, I don't really understand. No, you it's like, know. Oh my God. I tell you that it's so annoying. And then you're like, yeah, I get it. Oh my God. That would be annoying. And I just want to be mad at you. I'm like, I'm sorry that I empathize. Why can't you just disagree with from. me so I can be pissed it's off? So annoying. I'm not going to disagree with you because you're right. It's annoying. I don't I want have done your that. beautiful apology. Do I you genuinely do think like that? You're like, you know what? She's yes. right. Like you must be a really clear thinker because I have been with people that it's like, they do that shit just to piss me off. No, Ryan is like a practical thinker. He's a fixer. I always call him like Ray Donovan because he just wants to fix shit. And I think that- Are we, we allowed to say shit? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, say whatever I have you a want. terrible potty mouth. Nope, say whatever but you he, want. Uh, he, we've talked about this too. Like whenever we get in like, not an argument, but say I've had like an annoying day or I want to vent to him. I will be like, I have to predicate the conversation with like, listen, I just want to vent. I don't need you to come up with a solution to this. Cause like in the past I'll be venting and he'll be like, 
well, how does that make you feel? Maybe you should have tried this, this, and this. And I'm like, can like, I don't care. I don't want to know these things. I just want you Therapy to listen Ryan. to me. He is, but he is a practical thinker. He's like, how do I fix this? I want to fix this problem for you. And he comes from a good space where I'm just like, I want to tell you how annoying this person was. And I want you to just nod your head, (laughs) make it say, yes, Brittany, you're right. (laughs) They are annoying. Uh, We had had an interview a couple of weeks ago with a gentleman and he said to us, um, when you're not creating, you're judging. Yeah, that really resonated with us. And that hit me, hit me right in the face. And it made me realize why I try to fix things. I would rather be in a creative space doing things that are exciting than being angry, being upset, being frustrated, and certainly being mad at my wife. Um, So I find that I fix things so that we can move into something that's actually enjoyable. Yeah. Like Netflix and chill. Right. That's right. No, we, we use this, um, we use this all the time. We talk about on our podcast. So we'll share it with your audience here. Um, we, we found out a long time ago in, a, in an argument, there's a winner and there's a loser. So if, if I'm fighting for my beliefs and she's fighting for her beliefs and I win the conversation, I'm the winner and she's the loser. The reality of it is, is I don't want to be married to a loser. Wow. So, so why do I make my wife a loser? I also feel like you never, you've told this so many times and I'm always the loser. Like right. next time, could well, you please? Because I'm telling the story. Could you just switch it around <laughs> yeah. next time and be Can like, you change roles hypothetically, next time? hypothetically. Right. No, but if you think about that, do you want your, do you want to be married? Do you want to be engaged to a loser? No. So then stop making her lose every argument that you're in. It's not a matter of winning and losing. It's a matter of realizing that the core foundation of your relationship is based off of love and respect. We just sprinkle in some laughter every once in a while. We're human beings. We argue. But when you really pull it out and you say, is this going to get me where I want my relationship to be? Answer is no. Let's come to a Let's come to a resolution. That's it, all it comes down to. It goes to, would you rather be right or happy? That's awesome. It's very simple. You, know, you guys have me sitting here feeling like I'm watching a podcast. Like, <laughs> I'm in here too. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're the host. <laughs> yeah, wait, I'm supposed, I'm supposed to say something now, I think. Uh, jokes. But honestly, like, Ryan, I relate with you so much when it comes to that, like, I'm a big critical thinker, and I think things through when it doesn't involve me. If someone, like, cuts me off in traffic, and I'm like, my mind doesn't go to, maybe they're in a rush, maybe something bad's going on, maybe they, like, they've, they didn't see me, like, I don't give them the benefit of the doubt, I'm like, a lot of words come out of my mouth and I yell at it. <laughs> but my fiance is like, why do you have to get so stressed it. out? Why do you have to get so stressed out? And then we'll be on the highway and she'll be driving and someone cuts us off. And she's like, would you watch what you're doing? And I'll be like, Kristen, you don't know what that person's going through. And they're like, have you fucking like recorded yourself driving before? Like you're a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I do relate with you in the way that I am a critical thinker when it doesn't involve me being pissed off. Yes. You're, I get pissed off. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not some robot here, but I just, I find that if I am heated and this is, maybe this is a good thing. If I am heated, then Brittany knows I'm heated. She knows, I think more than anything else, it's like, okay, wow. I, I've, I've hit a trigger here. Um, and this is where we like, we have to work through things because we, when we get into like a heated argument, which isn't mm-hmm. often, but when we do, I, I, I don't like the confrontation when it gets there because I immediately, like I react with emotion and then we are, we actually, this is so sad, but we had this guy on our podcast who was incredible. Um, what was his last name? It was so cool. Young blood. Young blood. Is it Mike? Mike. J- Youngblood? J- no. Anyway, no. last, his last name was young, Blood. like what a cool last name. Awesome. And he was just talking about how, um, when a man and a woman argue a lot of the times, there can be conflict because G.S. Youngblood. G.S. Youngblood. He he said that women usually argue with emotions, right? Like they're very emotional. And men, again, hear something and they just want to fix it. And if a male is trying to fix a problem, they're almost like 
taking their wife or spouse or whatever, their emotions and just pushing them aside. They're not validating those emotions. They're just being like, okay, fine. Like you need to get over it so that we can work through this pro like this problem where now the woman is left feeling like she is invalidated. Her emotions are not okay. And then that's where like they butt heads. And that really is where we struggle because I get really emotional. Like when I'm like angry, I cry because I'm just like so angry. So and when, answer. right, it sucks. And I'm just like, and sometimes honestly, honestly, when I have something that I need to say to Ryan, if we're heated, I will leave the space and I will write him an email or I will text him. And I will be like, these I are the things I need to say to you. I would like to revisit this conversation in person in a little bit. I just know that I can't verbalize those emotions all the time because I'm like super emotional and then I'll start to cry. And then Ryan, Ryan is very like, like you fact, like matter of fact, critical thinker. And I'm just like, can you not for a second? Like, I just need to get this out. So it's an interesting dynamic, but. It's very he, good to hear your side of things though. Yeah. yeah he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> to be honest with you, like it, my fiance is a lot like you and maybe that's just a, a, a female thing, but she does have the same thing. If it is an argument that she's genuinely like stressed about whether or not it's money, whether or not it's something going on in our life or income tax comes back and I was on CERB and I owe like it's things like that, that she just gets so worked up and stressed and she starts to cry. And, and her instant reaction is, I don't know why I've cried. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make it any easier for me to help you. And like, I'm, I'm just like, I'm a man, I guess. Like, I'm just like, yeah. tell me what's wrong. I'll fix it. And then she's like, there's nothing wrong. And I'm like, clearly yeah. there is. <laughs> like we just so go back and so forth. Fun. And then she just like leaves the room, just like you said, and she'll just chill out for a couple minutes and then I'll come in and she'll be like, I'm just stressed about this and this and this, but it, it is very cool and, and nice to hear your side of the way a woman would think and the way the guy just wants to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and I'm completely honest with you, I get frustrated sometimes where I'm like, I don't understand. There's no problem. Let's not be stressed. It's going it, to, we got a year. Let's just figure it out. We'll be fine. And she's mm -hmm. just like, I'm upset. And I'm like, I get it you have a right to be upset, but like, why are we upset right now? Mm -hmm. And then she's, she's upset. And I, I get it. I just, it's very cool to hear that you explain it um, better. Than Next time I just clearly try to validate yeah. her emotions. It's, meet, like, it, yes. it's meet them at the emotion. Yes. Validate the emotion, recreate the emotion. And then the emotion goes away. That's, not, not even goes away, but they're, they're kind of like, it's not I'm more open to a yeah. conversation about a possible solution if there is one. Whereas a few minutes ago, I was not. So validate her emotions and then slowly. Try yeah, to her women, um, this is, I know. I'm never, playing. ever say calm down. Just throwing that out oh, there. I don't it do doesn't that. end that's well. A, that's a that's suicide. Well, you're a better man than I am. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's, uh, that's the, that's something that comes out of my mouth more often than I'd like to admit. Yeah. But what, what I was going to say is, you know, the recreation of the, of the emotion, getting into their space, getting into their world just allows you to, to recognize that you don't have to steamroll them. I, you know, I'm painting the women with the, with the same brush. So please don't take it this way, mm -hmm. but you know, often what will happen in uh, in a dispute between men and women is the women bring the emotion and, and men bring the facts. You cannot talk facts when there's emotion. Mm -hmm. You have to bring the emotion down before facts can be presented. Otherwise it comes across as what they, what often has been called mansplaining, mm -hmm. which is almost like talking to a child and no woman who has any self-respect will be spoken to, to a man, like they're a child. And then that anger belittling. goes higher and higher and yeah. higher. And it's not belittling. It's not belittling. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's how, say. it's how men argue. It's fact-based, fact-based where women bring the emotion and it comes across as oh, belittling. Okay. I see what you mean. Like mm -hmm. without right? intentionally doing it, that's how a man, man would speak to a woman in that in that instance. that's how a man would speak to a man that's how a man would speak to a woman that's how a man would speak to a child that's how we communicate is very, is very some fact men. based some, yeah sure. very fact based so you can't bring facts on top of emotion get to, get to the source of the emotion bring the emotion down then bring the facts because then you can have a conversation and we found this out like this is this is new to us this is something that we're working on mm -hmm. and we're working through because 
Brittany is emotional and I want to fix it. So if she's, if she's walking away, I'm like, where are you going? Yeah. Well, you, you've been better. I've been better, he, way better. He, he does so, say, yeah, way like, better. I'll give you some space before he was like, no, we need to solve this right now. And I was like, no, we don't like, take I'm not space. walking away forever. I just need a couple minutes. Yeah, take your space, Every gather day. your thoughts, come back when you're ready to talk. Cause I am ready to talk. I don't want to talk about this for all night. Mm-hmm. I'm taking the dog. Dumbass. <laughs> Oh, he yeah. does listen. He the does best. listen. <laughs> I love it. I so thought I did funny. that impression good too, but yeah. Well, try it. No, Go ahead. no, no, no. Try Come it. on. Go ahead. No, Ryan. Brittany says I sound like this old raggedy woman. He does. He sounds like. Why don't you do it? And then I'll do like it right after. Greg. Do you, do you know who old Greg? Oh my god! My I know who old. No. I'm old Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly who Ryan sounds like when he tries to do. Do you love college. me? Do you love? Yeah, me? Do you exactly. Play the love game with me. <laughs> It's so, it's so good. Yeah, but from a boot. Shoot, <laughs> shoot, shoo, yeah. yeah, that's right. Her TikTok Sorry. fucking kills me. Jennifer, is that a TikTok? She's the best. I made, I, I made a TikTok. Oh, and did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's called the yeah, the OG MILF. Yeah, it is. Take yeah, it yeah, he's got his mom. Stifler's mom. Job, mom. She is the best. I love her. Such a good movie. A um, little bit of change of pace, but I try and ask every one of my guests guests three questions um and the reason why i do it is to try and leave the interview feelings of like question answer question answer question answer and maybe i don't feel like that has been what's been going on so far i feel like it's really been a genuine conversation i'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say but i do like to try and break it up with just some like life questions that i try and ask every guest they might not not all be relatable to you guys and i completely understand if they're not but let's let's give it a go So the first question I always ask everyone is, are you 100% happy with how your life is going right now? Disregard COVID. No, I'm a hundred percent happy and I'm all, we're always striving for something more. Yeah. I would, I would never say we're a hundred percent. Ryan and I are very much like we're working on this, but we always are like, what else can we do? What else can we do? Because we see being content as not always a positive thing, right? So you, there's times of content as being like, you're happy, let's enjoy the moment. But we are working on that. Like Ryan and I always say like, oh my gosh, five years ago or whatever, we wanted this, this, and this, or we wanted to have this in a family and, and yada, yada. And now we have it. We have a sign in our dining room that I made a couple of years ago that I just feel like I live, we live by all the time. And it says, um, what does it say? <laughs> I'm like, I these love are the this good old days so we'll much. talk it's about in so years good. to come. Yeah, these are the good old days we'll remember in years to come. Like, you don't even realize we're living, living in, in the We're living the in the best days. time of our lives. Yeah. And it's so hard to think that way. But there will come a time, hopefully, God willing, that we're, we live long enough to sit back and think, man, our 30s was awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, so to answer the question, no, we're not 100% happy because we're, I don't think we, that's not true. We're, we're 100%, 100% happy. happy, 100% content. No. Yes. No, we're always striving for more. Yeah, that's a that's exactly the answer I was expecting with how much you guys push to have a better podcast, better social media platform. You obviously have people helping you run. Um, how many people are either messaging you or trying to set up meetings with you, which is awesome. That kind of takes away some of the stress when you're trying to raise two young kids. Um, but it's exactly what I was expecting. I have the same mentality in a way. Um, am I happy? Yes. I have a beautiful fiance. I have a roof over my head. I have an amazing dog. I love my life. I love my job. Am I 100% fulfilled in what I want to do? No. Do I want to be a millionaire off this podcast? Sure. If it happens. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's not, my goal is to have these conversations, like already talking to you guys for 50 minutes. I've already learned so much from you guys in such a short amount of time. And that's what really means the most to me, but it's very nice to hear that you guys weren't just the regular Yes, I'm happy. Life is amazing. What else could I ask for? But the next question is, if you could change anything, would you and what would it be? I'd have uh, I'd have more sex. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I think I knew that was coming. Um, well done. Change. I don't know. Like, Bless yeah, you. It's one of those things where you say like, well, if you changed X, would it have that butterfly effect? And like, you wouldn't get here, here, and here. There's definitely some exploitations. I wish I could like not kind of reverse that away. Same. But at the same time. I don't like all of it. Yeah. At the same time, a lot of like 
a really bad relationship led our Ryan and I to reconnect after that. So it's like, if that didn't happen, had we had not, you know what I mean? So I don't know if I changed, I'm with I think I just like, I'd like to get more sleep, to be honest. Like mm-hmm. our kids are terrible sleepers. So, yeah, I think, you know, you know, you talk about um, hobbies versus sex. right off the bat. <laughs> sure. so, yeah. You talk about hobbies versus, um, you know, business, right? So you're a hobby. Usually you spend money and then a business usually makes you money. So yep. when, you, when you convert one to the other, there's a, there's a scary gap in between. Like, do you put money out too early or do you not put money out and it's too late? Like, did you burn yourself out? So I think where we're at right now, we're in a really cool place in our lives. We've got two young kids. We've got a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. They're healthy. They're happy. We've got laughter in our household. You know, we're, we've got a cool podcast. We're, we're doing our own thing. Uh, it's a really cool place for us to be. Um, I so I don't yeah, know if cool I change, I don't know if I would dad. change anything from the past. You know, if someone were to drop ten million dollars uh, on our laps, I'd accept that, um, <laughs> I and I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be cool to figure out what life would look like uh, with that. But where we're going and what we're doing, I, I don't think I don't think I'd change anything right now. That's true. That's true. Besides Facts. the sex, I would definitely take more. Facts. Of that. I was waiting for her to be like yeah. one thing I would change less. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a turn of events we have here that well you can't you can't change zero oh, oh. <laughs> i'm kidding wow. i'm totally kidding. you mean the number you're gonna get tonight yeah yeah cool sorry wow i'm having trouble hearing you oh even google disagrees <laughs> she was <you>. offended <laughs> oh, oh, so funny. Funny. well that that's good to hear you guys say and it's nice to ha- know that you like i i do relate in that as well like I do have an ex. I was with her for three years. I ended it with her when, or she ended it with me, whatever the heck happened. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> um, but I was in my last semester. I was in my last semester of college. I was pushing we towards see my you, career. Judith. <laughs> I was pushing towards my last semester of college and I, my age group, it wasn't like you walked up to someone on the subway and you're like, wow, you're cute. Would you like to grab coffee? It was like Tinder. Yeah. So I ended up meeting my fiance on Tinder. Wouldn't change it for the nice. world now. Love um, but definitely wasn't my setup. But like you said, like you went through certain relationships and you think to yourself, would you change it now? But it kind of helped you get on the path of where you ended up being in the future. So I definitely wouldn't mm-hmm. change that either. But the okay. the third question, which you guys have kind of already answered, um <clears throat> Now I can't remember what the third question is. Because <laughs> we already answered it. <laughs> hey, you guys did already answer it. If Are you guys happy now? Would you guys change anything? Oh, did anything significant happen in your life to make you guys take the dive into social media? So that might have been Brittany a while ago when she decided to push on Instagram, to become an influencer or to to show people what her life is. Um, did something significantly significant happen? Because I had been through some shit in my past that pushed me to honestly only care about what I think and the people closest to me think Mm -hmm. I am who I am either love me for who I am or don't like me. I, I, I'll live my life going forward regardless, and I'll be happy with the people around me that accept me for me. And that's kind of what pushed me towards not being afraid of posting on social media and being myself and starting a podcast without worrying about everyone's judgment. And that's why, like when I saw your TikToks and your reels of you bouncing back on people that would chirp, it was like right up my alley. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, well, I think I started social media because I, I was on mat leave and with our second, with yep. our son. And I just remember when we had our daughter, I would see social media and a lot of it again was so wrong. Like for a new mom to see all of these like super happy, everything is like amazing unicorn moms. And I was like, this is not accurate. And so I It's not our accurate. Pardon? It's not our accurate. Yeah, it's not our accurate. accurate. But I knew that I knew that because it because it wasn't mine, I knew that there were at least a few other people who might be feeling similar. So I think I was like, listen, I'm on mat leave. Um, 
I, I kind of opened up an account. And to be honest, I opened up my account because I used to sell like hand lettered signs. And I was okay. like, I'll just do some social media. And, and then I started storying more. And I noticed that there was kind of a community that felt the same way about motherhood and relationships. And so that kind of took off. And then my distaste for mom shaming really, really angers me. And I can get a bit spicy when people shame moms and that's where my clapbacks come from because I just feel like I have a pretty thick skin but sometimes people don't and I think it's important sometimes to let people know like you don't get to talk to a complete stranger on in the internet like that so I just like, continue to be authentic and it is what it is if you want to follow awesome you can just eye roll and scroll if it's not for you bye I get I get where you're at because my generation specifically we i had a cell phone when i was 16 it was a slide had a keyboard but then the next phone i had was a new samsung touchscreen had apps had a zippo on it i could show people that i had a lighter on my phone that did absolutely nothing but it was super <laughs> cool um but it was that like now you see kids and it's like they feel mm -hmm. like shit if they don't have as many likes on a stupid app they don't have as many friends they don't have they're not as popular. It's like social media was specifically designed to show each other that we lived different lives. We all have our individual. If we weren't all different, we wouldn't be humans. Like show your differences, show what interests you, show what you love, regardless of if you're going to be embarrassed or ups or, or not going to get all the likes in the world, at least mm -hmm. you being you. And just like you had, you have shown people you being you and showing the motherhood aspect, which I could definitely see taking off with a lot of moms um, just shows that you being you was successful and other people should not be as scared to do that as well. But I did skip over you, Ryan, to see if there was anything specific that had got you into you, you run your own business. I do. Yeah. I run my own business. Uh, but from the social media side of things, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm a chicken shit. Um, yeah, you talk about this a lot. I am. I'm a, I'm a total chicken shit. The reality of it is, is had Brittany not had a, a pretty solid following, I, I highly doubt I would have jumped in the way that we jumped in, um, to the podcast, to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Brittany was a safe blanket for me. Um, I'm, I don't know. I think it was Colonel Sanders that said this it says most people don't start something new because they don't want their friends to see them at the bottom of something. Mm -hmm. And that's me. I, I, I don't know what it is about me. It's like, I don't want people seeing me fail at something. So I just don't won't even start. So I either won't start or if, I'll, if I do start, I'll start it in private where social media is not one of those things that you can do in private. It's social. And so I, I'll tell you right now, I'll tip my hat off to, to my wife, Britt. Um, she had the, the, the belief in herself, the trust in herself to, to know, to put herself out there. Like that's scary to put yourself out there and not know what is going to be received. People are people going to like it? Are they going to hate it? Are they going to follow it? Are they not going to follow it? It takes something to put yourself on the line. And I never have, I honest to God, I never have. It may look like I have, but I cheated. Like I, there's a cheat code. A, B, A, B, up, up, down, down, left, right. Brittany. <laughs> That's auto cheat codes. That I'm was, joking. that was Brittany for me. And um, so none of the stuff that we have, and I'm not just saying this to inflate my, my wife's tires and hopefully get laid tonight. I'm saying this because <laughs> the reality of it is, is everything that we have in terms uh, of what you see is because of her okay. 100%. That's it. So no, nothing, nothing drove me. There was nothing like an aha moment. It was like, Holy Jesus. But now this that we're in on. it, you are very much like, let's do this, 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 and this. Because yeah. Because there's there. a platform there and I, and you know, it doesn't look like I'm starting from the bottom. That's just the reality of it. I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm, 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 a, I'm scared. I'm scared of that stuff. Yeah. Honestly, Ryan, I had the exact same mindset as you like less, like two years ago, like, just like certain things, I guess, happen in life and you're just kind of like, just put you to the point where I just didn't 
I didn't care anymore. <laughs> like it was just to the point where I, I had my moments in high school where I kind of clicked with a lot of different groups, but I also wasn't the most popular person. I had my share of bullies. I had my share of problems and things that I didn't do properly. And I was always ashamed of, and I didn't, I would always write out a social media post thinking it was hilarious. And then I was like, backspace all the way. No, I'm not going to post that. Who's going to like, what, who's going to think that's funny. Always hate on yourself kind of person. Like, I don't know. I just gained a lot of courage over the past couple of years. Like I'm in a sales role and I started talking to a lot of people and going on a tangent here for a second, but it's just certain things changed in my life and click, click, click. And it made it so that I was able to talk to people. And like, to be completely honest with you, you guys were the most nervous I've ever been for a podcast. Oh, oh. well, I, I hope that went away. So. I hope that went away. You did great. You've done yeah. great. Like, this is awesome. Like, you know, you put uh, yourself out there creating this podcast. It's an awesome podcast. You do an incredible job. I wouldn't have known that you were nervous. I appreciate that. There's really nothing to be nervous about with these two schmucks of us. So I think for me too, like just really quickly, when, when you guys talk about like being nervous and stuff, I wasn't always like this either. Like, I think honestly, becoming a parent has like really elevated my level of give a fucks. Like I say great way to put that. Right. I just don't, I don't have them anymore. Like I think once I became a mom, I had standards and my time was important and I just didn't take anyone's shit anymore. When you literally are cleaning shit. Yeah. You don't give a shit. You're not, you're not really shit based in the way that you used to be. So, um, yeah, it was, it's just been, it's been a roller coaster in a good way. I, I, I have a couple more things I wanted to touch on, um, before we get out of here. Um, one of them was if you guys had any words of advice for anyone listening that might want to start a podcast or is scared to start a podcast, or even for me being so small, you guys have any advice of how to keep pushing forward, um, or things to do to try and advance your, your audience. Um, I'll, I'll answer the first part of that question. I'll let Brittany do the other, cause she's the marketing genius here. Um, a start yeah, B start be consistent and C do it for you. Well, put. if you do it, if you do it for you, it doesn't matter where the ratings are. It doesn't matter how many people listen to it because you're doing it for you. That's it. So I say, start, be consistent and do it for you. And then everything else will organically be what it is. I would say I, too, I like um, don't be deterred for Ryan and I talk about like when we first started the podcast, people in our life who are our friends, were not our biggest cheerleaders. We've said this before, like strangers are our biggest cheerleaders and the people in our life, not all of them, but our close, some of our close friends, family, whatever, we're like, what are you, what are you doing? And it's hard to kind of feel like you have to justify something that makes you happy, but we really just kind of had to- spin it in a way where it's like this is a hobby and right now society doesn't necessarily accept these as hobbies like back in the day a hobby was golfing maybe still a hobby is, was still yeah do you know what I mean like oh yeah I'm that's allowed that's allowed oh so now you're taking time away to podcast like what's kind of weird don't let that shit deter you okay and if it does and they don't get it it doesn't matter they don't have to get it you're not doing it for them they are going to come around eventually and you're you'll be here and you'll be like cool but they don't matter. It, like they matter, but they don't matter in terms of your growth, right? Don't just don't let that deter you. What's that Lucas Graham line from uh, Seven Years Old? Even oh, the smallest so voices, good. they can make it major. Yeah, that's a really good super one. powerful line. But yeah, you know, there, there's only one voice that really truly matters, and it's it's in between both of your ears. Listen I, to yourself. Care about what it is that you're looking to do. You know, uh, David Meltzer, we had him on our, our podcast. He said something. He said, if 99.9% of the world doesn't like you, do the math. There's almost 8 billion people on the planet. That 0.01% of people are a massive audience. Mm -hmm. It's a massive audience. So you can fail at 99.99% of the world and still be super successful in the space that you're, that you're into. So talk about the things you like. Be passionate about it. Do it for yourself. And there are going to be people who are engaged with it because you're genuine and you're not trying to do anything else but you. Wow. 
again, I'm sitting here like it's my turn to speak. I forgot that I was here, but it's very awesome to hear you guys speak like that, especially with what you guys are going through and the success you guys are having with it so far uh, and, and how much further you guys have to grow and your opportunities are endless. It's, it's nice to hear about you guys talk about raising kids and, and, and juggling the running a podcast, running a social media, starting with being on mat leave. Like you just had a second kid and you're, you're posting these funny videos and you guys are like contagious with how funny and relatable you guys are as a couple. It's, it was very, it's very, very nice that you guys take time on nights like this to sit down with someone who is starting out. I'm on, this is my 10th episode to talk with them and, and, and sit down with them and, and give your time to do that. It's very awesome to hear that you guys have genuine things to encourage people to continue focus on yourself. My biggest thing when I post on social media is stop. Like my biggest thing was stop having the fear that everyone is going to judge you start being you. And if the people that want to like you will the people that don't, you shouldn't have had in your life to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, but regardless Thank you guys so much for coming on here. It's been a pleasure to meet you guys. You did say golf was acceptable. It's not right now, but when it is, Ryan, if you ever want to go to the Fox, I'm in. It's on me. Let's, let's golf. That's nine, nine rounds. I don't need you guys gone for all day. Consider it done. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having us on. Thank you for reaching out. Um, Yeah. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. Thanks guys. Thank you guys so much for coming on. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you know, if you have, have that glass night. of water just make sure you drink it if it's, if yeah it's lots of water i've been drinking like wine it. i don't even drink wine but yes. people don't forget people don't forget have a good one have a great yeah, night you, eh? you guys see ya bye for now bye